welcome to the fifth episode of Beyond the Billboard presented by the Pobes. And as you know, this series is about the movers and the shakers of the Sri Lankan advertising industry. We have a very special kind of episode today with a different kind of format. I'm sure you guys would have uh, heard a lot of buzz about Sri Lanka winning its first ever gold in the digital category in the Young Spikes competition. Um, so today we have the winners uh, in this episode and they'll be taking us through the submissions that they made both in the local competition as well as the submission they made in Singapore winning uh, that gold. But before we do speak to them, I'd like to put a quick shout out to our sponsors. Our episode sponsor is Prasara. Our production partner is Hype Media Network. If you do want to get in touch with them for any sort of uh, film or animation production, you can hit them up. Hit them, up, hit them up rather uh, on the number which is on the screen right now. They do TikTok videos, they do covert marketing, and they also um, do influencer management. Our creative partner is Loops Integrated, and our location partner is Tribe. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, we had two special guests. They are young, um, they've uh, done some really amazing work to bring, bring pride uh, to Sri Lanka. Um, it's a great achievement to win gold at uh, the Young Spikes, which is, uh, which is an arm of the um, Spikes Asia Festival of Creativity. They've been competing with the APAC region. So we have Amaya Surya Ferva, who is uh, the Digital Marketing Manager at Loops Integrated, and Arkham Anjat, who is, the senior, who is a Senior Art Director at Loops Integrated. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi, Pleasure hi. to have you guys here. Be here to be here. <laughs> you guys have been getting a lot of attention lately. A lot of people congratulating you from yep. the industry and yep. the marketing fraternity. What's it like getting all this attention? It's been really cool. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and surreal. Uh, yeah, we are, we are actually in a very good space right now. Mm. Where everything is going right, maybe. <laughs> yeah. The confidence is, is somewhere going else. Up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Must be, we must be feeling like it's it's unbelievable, right? It is. Um, yeah. Did you guys ever think that, you know, one day you'll be sitting here talking about this achievement, something like this? Yeah, I mean, I would say we did see it in ourselves, but I don't think we expected it to happen this soon. Soon, all yeah. right. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Um, I'd like our viewers to get to know you guys a little bit as well. So, Amaya, I'm going to start off with you. Why don't you briefly talk a little bit about your journey in the industry? Right. So, I mean, obviously, I didn't start off like, oh, I want to get into advertising. That wasn't the situation. Basically, I actually, my I did a degree in psychology. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, I was waiting for the results. There's a small delay. That's great. I always <laughs> think that, you know, a background in psychology is great for anyone who's in marketing. Yeah. Right. That's because, true. I mean, at the end of the day, we need to understand our consumers. Definitely. Yeah. Sorry. No. So, that's... Interesting because basically I wanted to be a therapist first and then towards like my final year, I started developing a liking towards consumer psychology. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was still not sure where I was going to go with it. Uh, but while I was waiting for the results, I wanted to do a job. I just uh, applied everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, got a call from Nestle. Uh, and I honestly, I applied so, to so many places. I don't even remember applying to Nestle, but they <laughs> called me and I was like, okay. Uh, so I took that job. It was supposed to be more of like an admin sort of a role, but I they gave me some opportunity to sort of get involved with working with the agencies that were working with Nestle. So that gave me a bit of a taste. I got to sit in on certain meetings. Right. So that gave me a taste of so the you industry. Thought, you know, I shouldn't be here. I should be there. <laughs> <laughs> it was more like, okay, that seems interesting. Mm -hmm. And then I also wanted to grow a little faster than I would in like a corporate setting. Nice. So then I was looking for jobs and I saw the loops ad and it said two years, it, it asked for two years of agency experience and I was like, um, okay. And then uh, my husband, shout out to my husband, he was like back then boyfriend, he was like, no, don't care about the years, just apply and see. So I applied. And then um, I got a call. I got called for the interview, and they hired me. And like, uh, I mean, Gayan gave me a chance there, really, because I didn't really meet all those requirements. And I started as like a just a social media content writer. And uh, and then after about seven eight months in that role, I think I felt like I've exhausted that. Like basically, I didn't see. 
I just in that role, if I just kept writing uh, content for social media, that didn't feel like I could go further. So there was an opening for like a strategy, sort of a, like a paid media strategy position. And they were trying to hire someone from outside. I spoke to Anoj and I was like, can I uh, give this a go? And he was like, yeah, sure. I'd actually feel more comfortable hiring from within. So then I got there and then I just kept going from there. Yeah, I think it, it's always, <laughs> it's been quite uphill for you, right? At yeah. Luke, because even when I was there, I could see you growing from, you know, from where you were. I mean, you come a long way yes. right now. But m the more important question is, I mean, with a background in psychology, have you been offering Arkham a lot of therapy lately? <laughs> I think I offer everyone she therapy. Does, she does. It's like <laughs> Amaya. Yeah, it's, it's a whole thing where I, I mean, I give a lot of unsolicited <laughs> advice to people. <laughs> I'm sure he would have uh, had a lot of nerves during the competition. So I think you would have had to kind of. That, that, did, that, did, of happen, that did happen a lot of times. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Amaya. <laughs> no Arthur, let's get to you. Uh, what's your story? I know that you have a, you come from very what humble beginnings. Yes. Um, it's I been a pleasure a... to see you come to where you were from where you were as well. So let's, let's discuss that a little bit. I have quite a story. So I, while I was at my previous job, I was not that happy with it. And then, so Rukshan was my lecturer and at SIM. So Rukshan from Hype? Yes. Ah! <laughs> and I was like... And yeah, he's, I, he's behind the camera at the moment, guys. You can't see him. But shout yeah. out to Rukshan. Shout out to Rukshan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I spoke to him. I was like, I don't like what I'm doing right now. Uh, is there anything for me? Then he was like, uh, I'll interview you. And I joined Loops. Actually, I joined Loops. Uh, uh, so Shehan had this startup called Job Labs. So I joined as a business development officer there. And with time, we figured that it didn't work out for me. Then from there, again, I joined into DM and you, uh, Loops uh, DM and you got me into digital marketing. I spoke to you also. And again, we figured that that was also not working out for me because I'm not the copy person, not the writing person. Anyways, I had an interest towards drawing and Yeah, visuals. we could see you in office doing all these different sketches and I was like, man, this guy's got some sort of, you know, some talent in that art area, right? I was anyways interested in that side of uh, advertising and then even content writing didn't, uh, the management realized, I realized and then I, again, I came and spoke to you and I was like, is there anything that I could do with uh, design? And then you gave me like one month, we are putting into creative, let's see if it works out. If not, no. And that's where I started and I'm here right now. Yeah, and I think there are a lot of people who, like people like Danny, who yes, also kind of Danny. groomed you within the creative space. And I think the, I think you've got a lot of inspiration and learning yes. there as well, right? So great. I think you guys have had some great mentors. You had a good mentor in, in the digital space. You had a great mentor in the creative yes. space. Lovely, and I think that's important, right? You need you need you need good mentors. Sometimes it's not about the job that you apply for; it's also about you know uh, having the right mentor, especially when you're starting your career, right? So that's great. That's great to see, guys. Um, let's get into spikes, right? Um, I know people in some people in the industry know what spikes is about. Some people in the industry don't know what spikes is about. So, in your own words, can you guys explain to our viewers what is Spikes Asia? What's this? What's the whole big deal there? Right. So, Spikes Asia is a, a festival of creativity that's, uh, that happens in Singapore. Uh, this is usually across two days where there's the exhibition of the shortlisted work and then there are like talks and sessions about uh, topics in the industry and which ends with an awards night. And there's also this Young Spikes competition that's part of the festival um, where they judge basically where uh, the best a uh, young talent from the APAC region sort of comes there and competes for this competition. Um, how it works for us, I mean, how we go from here to there is we, the 4S facilitates the, uh, our own Young Spikes competition in Sri Lanka, uh, where all the top contenders from the agencies come and compete. The Sri Lankan agencies. Sri Lankan agencies. We compete here and then um, the, the winners basically get to go to Singapore. Nice. And you all won the local competition. I remember yes. I remember seeing that presentation because in the final round, I was also one of the six judges, right? Yes. And I remember the whole crowd going, ooh, you know, and they started laughing and clapping when you guys made that presentation. It was yeah. actually quite good. Um, yeah, and, and, and from there, how about the global process? Uh, so we, how it happened was we, we got the brief uh, back here in yeah. Sri Lanka. 
uh, we had like 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, we got it on a Friday. At, so Sri Lankan time, it was around 3.15. Hmm. We got the brief. We were at office at that time. We did uh, a b- basic research, went back to her place. <laughs> and we said the entire, not the entire night, we had a small All right. sleep also. Yeah, so, so basically, I mean, to summarize, uh, when it comes to the spikes, young spikes, so there's a local competition yeah. that's facilitated yes. by the four A's. And you compete with the top agencies uh, here. And once you win here, you get to go and compete with all the APEC yeah, countries. Yeah. So we're talking about places like Vietnam. We're talking about Singapore. We're talking about Australia, right? We're talking about uh, even India and Malaysia, Japan. Japan. A lot of countries, right? So it's quite a tough fight, right? And you get the top teams from all those countries uh, coming in there. So that's great. Um, and, and and Spikes Asia is not just about young spikes, right? You, ha- you have the um, the creative festival, the awards from all the submissions from the agencies, the, the exhibitions, and you also have um, like a lot of uh, top speakers from all over mm. the world coming into the festival mm. um, and showcasing uh, their work. And uh, I mean, it's great. And I'm also happy that, you know, locally we're trying to do something yeah. very similar with the Four Years Festival as well similar setup, um, a local, our yes. very own kind of festival on a, on a you know, like a, like a global scale one. So many international speakers coming down. So I hope you guys have submitted a few stuff as well yeah. um, and We're excited about that. Because when you mentioned that, I just wanted to say, because when we first went to Spikes and we saw like the shortlisted work and we got that whole experience, not just in terms of the competition, like the talks and actually being exposed to all the like top people top of the people, industry yeah. that was amazing and the first thing i actually right. i remember telling him that uh, i wish everyone else gets to experience yeah. this and hopefully yeah. soon they're gonna get that experience right um tell me about the kind of support and training you got before you all started when you all started this journey we had this from the local company yes yeah. from office also this started uh, with, the local. with the local competition so we had uh, uh, a lot of so how it started was one day uh, I was just working at office and Amai drops me a text saying that uh, uh, local spikes and I was like yeah she was like do you know your team I was like no she was like we are a team and I was like oh, okay nice so that's where it all started and then we had a lot of uh, you actually gave us a lot of mock-up yeah. briefs around so we worked the first brief uh, we had like around two briefs yeah and that actually helped us understand about us yeah. and how what our, what our strengths are and how, and we how work. yes how we work. Shout out to Assam for those most yes. briefs like that really helped because that set the basement for us to understand how things work how how we pitch. work and the so one thing I want to tell you guys I mean it's you guys are not the only ones I've given briefs to as in yes. there's several people that I've given briefs to even this I mean in 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 the several years but it's lovely to see when people take that brief take that learning and put their heart and soul into that and i think the difference uh, which was made is the fact that you guys are hungry right you all wanted it so you all actually had the passion to to want to do something about it right so i mean people like me like people like your mentors and everybody can you know we can lead the horse to the water but you guys really you know uh, made it your own so that's great to see mm-hmm. right so yeah continue uh, yeah, like I said, it helped us understand like how to take a brief, how do you strategize the b- presentation, how to break it down, how to break it down yeah. and everything. And uh, yeah. Yes, I remember one of the main feedbacks we got from both the mock briefs was, I remember like Danny Swice saying, you know, uh, think about the problem, think about the problem. When we were cracking the brief and the local competition, I just I could literally hear his voice in my head. And that really, that really helped us. Um, and that was like prepping for the local one. Uh, and then uh, even in terms of the global one, we had about a couple of months, but we couldn't use all those yes, months. We actually, I mean, I got married, yeah. I got, uh, I was going around the Great. world, there was not a lot of time. But that last week, week is where we actually yeah. worked. Did yeah. We put so much effort there. Four sure. uh, A's did a session for us that was really helpful because that was about what two three days before yes. the, we yeah. got the brief. So that really we got so much input from all the people who sure. were there, 
so that's so, great. I mean, so I mean, I'll, I'll just because I know what mm -hmm. you guys went through, and I was there with you guys also. So I think the local team there was a there was a team that helped and yes. kind of backed you mm -hmm. so from myself to Danny yes. and Anuj and yes. Sohan, who was there yes. to kind of give you the yes. feedback when you all did the presentations. And I think when you all went to the global uh, setting, also I think there were industry professionals who yeah. came together yeah. with the help of the four A's. From I think, correct me if I'm wrong. So I think there was Ransley, there was yes. Shehan, yeah. uh, there was Tara. And Tara is someone who has won spikes before as yeah. well, right? So I think, I mean, it helps, right? When the community and the industry also comes together yeah, uh, to kind of support you. So I think you guys need to be very grateful that there were so many people behind you yeah. <laughs> rooting for you. I keep saying that the, so we got here on the shoulders of so many people. Like, I feel like, I don't know if they know enough that all of them played such a huge role in making Sri Lanka number one. Because from uh, that to even my, like, I would say even my team who like just worked without me for that last week, letting me prep, everyone had loops, right? Like maybe they didn't realize at that point, but they were doing such a great help. Um, I mean, shout out to Oken also, like he did my mm. work. He did my work, Anoj understood, they all took over my work. And so we had like the time to actually really just focus on this because we knew how big this was. Great. And shout out to Shehan. We bugged him so much like after the session because he said he has access to this platform with some yeah, past work to nice. go through. So we called him, we came here. Uh, we yeah, were literally and, sitting in yes, that room. That was the room. <laughs> <that> room. <laughs> Soon after you guys won, my, the, my next call was to Shan and said, okay, we need to find a million bucks to send these guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> also, one thing I would like to mention is we didn't uh, overdo it all. So we didn't stress about the practice. Also. We did the basic stuff. We covered everything that needed to be covered. Uh, so basically, what I want to say is we didn't stress about it. It, nice. We just took it easy. It so. was a, so it was more like rather than yes, we wanted it, yes, we worked hard for it, but why with that it was more of a belief that we can. Understood. That's what really. So that's us. great. Um, fantastic. Lovely to see so much of support. Now, um, before we wrap up this segment and actually get to the submissions very quickly, I want to quickly touch on the fact that how important is it to have chemistry with your partner? Oh, it's, it's so important, I think. It's very important. Yeah, it's but very, we realized yeah. because, see, we didn't, we didn't know, we, we had worked together uh, at Luke's, but not really closely, maybe on like one or two campaigns. Yes. Uh, but we are friends outside of work, so that really helped, I think, as mm. well. And when we got those mock briefs, we realized how well we worked because there's no one, like neither of us are trying to one-up each other. Uh, if somebody points out a flaw in the other person's thing, you do. I, I mean, if he points something out, I'm not trying to be defensive. I'm like, oh, right, okay. And then we go from there. So you you don't always find that with anybody. So I think that chemistry is really important. And when agencies are sending uh, duos for this, I think that's a, that's a thing to sort of consider. That right. really works. Sorry, and did you guys argue, fight, get frustrated with each other? Not no, really. Come on. It was <laughs> No, we didn't. The only only time, I mean, we didn't fight, but like in Singapore, uh, uh, like he was getting late to everything. So I'm like, oh, where are you? <laughs> not, not for the uh, Not for the presentation. Not for the presentation. Uh, so for the winning announcement, so it was at 12.20. I am I was there from like 10, right? And I'm now walking. In, I'm inside the room. Yeah. They're about to start. I'm like, where are you? And he's just like, oh, I just got a cab. Where are you? 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 Where yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even for the words night. Even for the words but night. I, but I made it there on time for the announcement. Uh, yeah. Like right on time. Right on time. I was, there and when it matters. So I was okay. terrified they start the words night with the Young Spikes Awards and I'll have to walk off the stage alone. Right. Which would have been embarrassing. Right, so we need to wrap up this segment. Yes. Um, there's a video that I want to play also. So I'm, I'll play that for you on the in the second segment, right? Um, so let's take a quick break and uh, with a message from our sponsor, Prasara. Um, yeah, let's get back and we are get, going to get into the local submission first. So see you right after the break. Ducky, Nan. Ducky, Mama. 
අපිනම් ඒ කාලේ සම නිරෝගි වෙන්න ලස්සන වෙන්න ගෑවි වෙනිවැල් වගේ හෙල ඕසු ඒකට දැන් හොයන්න හදන්න වෙලාවකුත් නැහැ හැදුවත් ගන්නෙත් නැහැ ප්‍රාසර සබන් වල තියෙන්නේ මේ හෙල ඕසුම තමයි ස්මාර්ට් නේ ඔබ තදම ස්මාර්ට් අම කෙනෙක් වෙන්න ප්‍රාසර කියන්නේ හෙල ඕසු හෙල ඕසු කියන්නේ ප්‍රාසර to the second segment of Beyond the Billboard presented by the 4As. I am Vasam and if you've been liking the episode so far, please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our future content. Like karanna, share karanna, open up there, right? Okay, all right. Um, so, as you know, we are talking to Amaya and uh, Arkham. So, in this segment, we are going to get into the submission that you guys made Uh, for the local competition but um before we get into that i'd like to ask you guys what 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 was your experience like during the world, the uh, local competition what was the feeling when you entered we were i mean i think at that point the gravity of the entire thing hasn't set in so we were all you know ready to just take the brief have fun with it uh we were and just we would have seen like a room full of uh, yeah. contenders right so but we were still okay <laughs> until wasam came near us and said if you don't win you can't come to work tomorrow <laughs> and and you smiled and walked away <laughs> and then just kept coming back and saying Smiling. no pressure guys no pressure and we were like oh <laughs> but but even with that the cool part was we realized that you actually had faith like you yeah. you actually So I knew we had a chance and we were like okay all right <laughs> the pressure's on I was kidding guys it's not that I was going to fire you the next day <laughs> Yeah yeah I mean no <laughs> but I think it added to the experience <laughs> yes, uh, yes I could uh, I could see uh, Arkham's uh, awkward smile whenever I kept coming to you guys and uh, just checking if everything was okay <laughs> That's great but I mean Ar- Arkham was very you know very timid and silent before, uh, before winning before winning but after winning my god there was so much of confidence <laughs> and it felt like he just you know went up a few notches in fact Definitely. I think there's a video that I'd like to play to you Arkham I'd, I'd like to get a small explanation as to what that was about yeah shall we shall we play the video Varuni yeah. Arkham what do you have to say it it obviously in ekata mama kawat ganan ganne galanni e mukad e mukad da mukad me kya that was the line kawat ganan ganne like the cuisine that was right after we won it and it was meant to be a joke people took it seriously prakarana denne shape shape aul anne <laughs> right okay so guys i think uh, there are a lot of people who are interested to see what your submissions are so shall we get in to what you guys first presented for the local competition all right this is it first the local one let's go all right yep okay so to take you all through the brief uh, so prima so it was the brand was prima kotumi and uh, prima kotumi has been also associated as a very fun brand since the beginning and uh, the brief wanted us to come up with a digital campaign uh, that is that is targeted towards the uh, uh, tg and uh, within the digital space so that was a brief in summary but uh, while we were studying the brief what we figured was there was no uh, solid problem like so it was, was open ended it was really open ended so we again we did a little bit, little bit of research we studied about the competitors and did a lot of uh, we did a lot of research that we spent a lot of time trying to identify the problem because no, with the previous mock up briefs and stuff that's what stuck with us and uh, so we spent a lot of time uh, so within understand. that duration right um, i mean you guys had just half a day to do this right yeah. yes around and eight, uh, how eight much hours. how much percentage of that time was taken to identify the problem so we i think gave ourselves one hour yes okay. but it went a little one and a half we actually I, we broke it down like mm. by 12 we identified the problem yeah. by one i don't remember the exact time but, but yeah we had timings we like that down. and we wanted to spend sufficient amount of time on the problem so that's great i think that's some great advice there as well because what you did was you you allocated time for yeah. each yes. task yes and you put yourself a schedule without just sitting and saying make a garmo yeah. right 
great fantastic okay and then uh, after studying uh, doing a lot of research again what we figured was so magi papalakottu is a competitor and they have been slowly trying to invade the space of this fun space in the market and with the recent uh, papadi magi kottu the campaign they had the fun space the breakup campaign uh, what we realized was that campaign that ad had a lot of reach and they were slightly getting ahead of uh, kutumi i mean it was a start so we wanted to uh, talk about that problem so we picked up on the competitor then we checked what the competitor had been doing and then we found that they are in, like getting into the fun space and that's the angle that we mm. took because the brief called for a campaign that reestablished prima kutumi in the fun space like to sort of strengthen that connection with kutumi and fun uh, so that problem uh, was there and uh, so this is little funny how we sort of got there uh, we were discussing like what we can do so after we pro- figured out the problem before going into like inside or whatever we were just having a chat we were having fun with it and uh, we were um, I, i mean i'm going to have to say this because that's the whole yes. idea but go we're talking for it, go for it. we were talking about we were talking about drugs and like how ca- can we like can we make this like a drug and we wanted to put <laughs> like a packet of drugs that a, a sachet and we were just we were just joking around how, how it started yeah. was uh, so i was researching i was watching a video of this guy snorting a uh, maggi sachet a noodle sachet and i showed it to her and she was like ah oh, malinda did this five five years before yeah. and then led to what if we uh, <laughs> the fine gentleman you married am i <laughs> yep <laughs> little weird but it works <laughs> but uh, that yeah that basically that made us talking about drug that got us talking about drugs and we were like okay can we make it a drug and all that and uh, but we didn't want so we the cool part of spikes is you can sort of leave all these practicality aspects behind and just go crazy but even then there is a line that you can't cross right so we were like okay we obviously can't put a packet of drugs in a noodles packet like that's not something you can do but i was like i didn't want to let go of the thoughts so, right so then i started um, researching about uh, other thing other ways to get high you know the runners high and this and that and for our luck stumbled upon an uh, article no, no, uh yeah stumbled upon an article that basically said uh spicy food makes you high like that it, it stresses your brain the same way that releases endorphins that uh, sort of gets you high and i mean prima kottumi is known for its spice it's hot and spicy right so then we really clung on to that insight and um, yeah that became my insight that spicy food makes you high uh and then we were like okay how do we know how do we package this what do we do about it and etanadi we got the line but then we we got the line i'll review the line later uh but we wanted to see how we can the line was in the idea right so how do we really package this uh so then the idea we wanted the brand to become the embodiment of fun itself because they are trying to make the connection with fun in the fun space but what if you become fun right so the way we want to do it is position kotumi as the first legal drug in the world and how we got here the line that we came uh, pun intended <laughs> uh, i mean like I, i when i when you guys first presented this and you you even before revealing the line right yeah. and you you mentioned this first legal drug in the world i mean, I, i i i got goosebumps at that point i was like whoa something really cool is about to come i was waiting for it and i had no idea what the what the end was so i'm feeling excited again i'm getting goosebumps <laughs> nice <laughs> so how do how we do this how we position this as a legal drug is we ask a very simple question right we say line nekak adimuda so that was that was our line right uh, because we were talking about this whole drug thing and we realized we just we were just throwing the words around line nekak adimuda and all that and i was like hold up noodles lines also you slurp it up <laughs> it was like a 2 minute decision that we took cuz we knew that this was a bit risky but also we settled on this uh, philosophy where high risk high reward that yeah. was their 
during the local strikes and the in, uh, global yeah, and the strikes, global strikes, strikes as well. Because so, like, what's the what's the point of playing it safe at that, that point? Yeah, I mean, no it's crazy. I think that reward is great because I mean, at the end of the day, there were six judges, yes. six judges who evaluated the final round in the local competition, and it was a unanimous decision. That was cool because when we presented it also at that point, everyone started, like even the first round, they just started laughing and we knew. All right, so good. anything? Yeah, so the execution part. So how do we do is we basically created an app uh, that um, it's like a basically like a game, right? The gamification process where <coughs> while eating the kotumi, um, you open the uh, app that has a basically camera, uh, it opens your camera and uh, with the slurp of the noodle, like the more you slurp it, the longer the line is, the sc your scores go up. And then you can share your high scores. Nice. <laughs> and uh, that was the like the main execution. Uh, so yeah, that's the, sort of what we kind of wanted to look like. A mock-up like. of how mock -up, the yeah. interface would look. Actually. Because like the longer the strand, the higher you get is kind of what we wanted to uh, imply. And we also wanted to do this whole gimmicky thing where we do this whole um, CIA type video where the police uh, raids the Kotomi factory and says, you know, we found like uh, um, drugs or whatever. And then uh, the company puts out a statement saying, you know, they're like, we don't have, we don't have anything illegal going on, but we do have something cooking. Nice. And uh, then, uh, yeah, then we launch with the, the filter app thing. I feel like even this, you could you could do some interesting covert marketing. Oh yeah, yeah you know, tapping into some of those community pages. Definitely, and all that, yes. you know. that was the angle that we yeah. were taking. And uh, just gonna put in a placement there because shout out to Rukshad again. Because yep. <laughs> if you do want to do some get something like that done, he's the man to get in touch with. Yes. Covert marketing. Not many people use it, right? Yeah, let's move on. Yeah, that's that was the idea. So that's uh, interesting, that's it. <laughs> excellent, fantastic. I mean, a lot of people loved it, and uh, congratulations for winning uh, the local competition. I mean, the moment uh, moment we saw it, we knew. I mean, we didn't even have mark our sheets. We knew this was <laughs> clearly uh, the winner. So congratulations on that. Let's take a quick break and come back and let's discuss the submission that you made for the global uh, APEC. APEC spikes competition All which right. you made in singapore so we'll be right back after a quick message from our sponsor parasara potakina paachi amma api nan e kale sama nirogi wenna lassana wenna gavi weni mel wage hela osu ekata den oyanda hadanna welawa kut ne heduwat gannet ne Prasara Sabangwala Tiyanne, Mee Hello Suma Thamai. Smart ne, Oba Thadama Smart Amma Genek Venna. Prasara Kiyanne Hello Su, Hello Su Kiyanne Prasara. Welcome back to the final segment of this episode. You are watching Beyond the Billboard presented by the 4As. You're with me, Wasam, Arkham, and Amaya. Now, we heard the local submission. We saw them present it. I think everybody's interested to see what they went and did in Singapore. So now, we're going to put that up, right? Uh, but before we get there, I want to also find out from you guys mm. uh, what was your experience in Singapore like when you when you guys went in there what was the vibe at spikes like uh, it was my first time flying also and oh, again, it was so <laughs> cute man he was just pointing at planes like oh please <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's a new country new people apart from spikes so that was it's, itself a good uh, feeling to have it was in a it was re-energizing also uh, and when I got to Spikes with all the work that was uh, out there you feel that okay there's so much more that you can learn there's a lot of people a lot of aspects a lot of perspectives so much of inspiration yeah. so much inspiration yeah. right? so much inspiration and like that first moment when we walked up the stairs like it had Spikes Asia yeah. on the side and the stairs were making up some word I don't remember mm -hmm. anymore because I was full of nerves. But like that feeling is 
it's just nothing like I've any, experienced any, before. Any specific events, activities, or any any special uh, what do you call segments that, that caught a, your eye? Um, there was a, I mean, all of them were great because we were just we were awestruck, mm. right? We were taking mm. in everything we can from just even from conversations. The coolest part is I think we got to really. Uh, Network and talk to a lot Did of you make industry any leaders. We made did. a lot of friends. Which countries? Uh, Hong Kong, Korea, mostly yeah. Kazakhstan, Indonesia. India, Indonesia, uh, Singapore. I remember I went to Spikes quite a few years ago, yeah. and I still have a group with some of the people. Uh, you know, we met at Spikes. You yeah. know, and how was the after party? Was it good? Uh, there's no after party okay. anymore. Uh, there's awards night. So at the awards night, all of these friends that some of them were there and they recorded us and going up on stage nice. they sent us the videos and, it was really and nice. i mean just 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 one thing i need to also mention is like uh, obviously we were getting updates uh, yeah. when we were in colombo and when you guys did win we saw you guys carry the sri lankan flag on stage and that itself gave us such great pride yeah right it was such a great feeling to see the sri lankan flag up there on stage how did that happen? Shout out to Alan <laughs> for coming through <laughs> with that flag because we tried really hard to find a flag. We called the embassy, they didn't pick up and we were like, okay, we, we just, we, we can't do anything we about didn't it now. have no. time also. We yeah, because I had back. to, just after they announced the winner uh, and then they had a debrief session with the judges, I went around looking for a dress to wear. So that was not a lot of time either. And then we went to the awards night and uh, Alan just came up and just opened the bag and said, here. Yeah. Wow. Well, and and I, I think, I, I mean, I did have a chat with him and he said that he, he also had to make a lot of calls Cause, to try and yes, arrange that. And he had yes. to go to different places yep. to kind of get it, get it picked up. But that was really great because we really wanted to do that. I mean, that's how much Sri Lanka has been hungry, right? Yes. <laughs> Amazing. And when we pulled out that flag, like, the entire room was just cheering because, I mean, they're all advertisers. We like it when we make a big scene. Mm. And our, our, the other two winners, they got the cheer, they got yeah, the clap. I think uh, Dil but, Dili was also there, right? Dil Shah yes. was also there and he was also screaming and shouting. Screaming, shouting. The and entire room the th was... The cool part was it was not only just the Sri Lankans. When we pulled out the flag, everyone got excited. Nice. That was really nice. All right, guys, let's get to the brief. What were you briefed on uh, for the submission that you made at the the competition okay so the brief was they wanted us to do a digital campaign that will eradicate the social stigma uh, of mental health in singapore yeah wow. it was That's from a uh, ngo, NGO called Club 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 Deal. so that was the summary of the brief and again yeah. we so basically i'm sorry yeah, yeah. <laughs> just um, they are, the problem was the stigma and they want they, they were, talking about how uh, they want to create make like the basically initiate social inclusion of people with mental health issues because apparently in Singapore you are really looked down upon if you have mental health issues so yeah and then again we did uh, we started off with the research as usual to find the problem because this had a problem yes. this brief had a problem but we didn't want to stop there we wanted to add a layer to it we want to really find out and like the marinate in the why of it that we did that for quite a while i think yeah. yes because they wanted us to make people talk about mental health they wanted us to they wanted people to come uh, help out people with mental health issues but also with the research what we figured was uh, people at singapore actually have an idea on how mental health works even though there's there's stigma around mental health in singapore uh, so we, what we wanted to do was, because of this stigma, people uh, look down on uh, the people with mental health issues. Uh, like for, for example, they look, they look at them as weak uh, people who are not set to uh, work within the community. And then uh, again, we, did, we thought about it a bit more, we dug deep and what we figured was uh, Singaporeans have this thing where they strive for excellence. They want to do everything, at, give the best at everything. So this kind of sets a standard, like if you're, if you're not there, you're not there at all. So from there on, uh, what we figured was... Uh, yeah, so that whole pressure to excel was like an insight that we uh, clung on to. And, and basically, I, I think we spent that entire night sort of figuring out what it means to be a Singaporean. Because we wanted to understand the context, the TG, 
didn't want to go with a generic uh, campaign that could apply to anybody we, because uh, I mean, I personally love working with cultural insights and it's a bit tricky when you're doing it for a different culture, different market, different market there, yeah. but again, high risk, high reward. We want to take that risk. Uh, so that pressure to excel is so ingrained in them that there's even a word for it called kiasu. Uh, kiasu means the fear of losing, like having a word for it means it's ingrained in that culture, the fear, like the fear to lose. Mm. So. The, since we found that nugget, we kept going down the path of trying to figure out, okay, what else makes you a Singaporean? What else brings, uh, like, what else uh, is a part of the identity? And then we found out about the Kampung spirit, which which basically means the community spirit of helping each other. It comes from the village days of Singapore where everyone helped each other. And what we realized from just being there for like a day or two is also you really see it there, right? The racial harmony, all the communities live together still to this day. Um, so we, we realized that's also another part, another like a uh, aspect that color, uh, sort of ingrained in them. So then we were like, okay, there's two things that they already have in them. So why not use those? And what we wanted to do was we wanted to combine those two and create a fear of losing as a community. Okay. So bringing, putting the Kiaso and the camping spirit together and creating a new personality trait for what it means to be a Singaporean. So basically our problem insight and in a sense solution was all just like one in, in that one nugget of what makes you a Singaporean. Um, so basically, that was the idea, right? Making people, uh, the, creating that fear of losing as a community, turning the shame of mental health issues into national pride. Uh, so we wanted to go big with this. No, okay, all right. right. You really tap into their psyche. Yes. Hmm. So then, then it came to the execution part, right? So we wanted a medium. Uh, that was easily accessible to everyone because this is a broad target audience. This said 18 to I think 60 or something, right? So it has to be a medium that everyone is already on, everyone's accessible through that. Um, it had to be credible because this is not like a fun brief, it's mental health, right? It had to be a credible source and it also had to in some way tie to your identity as a Singaporean. Okay. Uh, these three things were like we wanted them, and but it was also tough, right? How do you get all these three things in one? Then the more research we did, we found that uh, there's an app called the SingPass app, which is their national identity app. And everybody has it on their phones. Uh, and you can also do digital like integrations to that, where you, basically it's not just identity. You can pay your bills, you can pay your taxes. So you can- like a super app. In the super app, you can integrate certain other services where when you click on it, it basically takes to that platform. Uh, so we were like, okay, we can integrate Club Heels platform to this. So what we wanted to do was uh, on National Day, so that's a day that's packed with national pride to begin with. Uh, we send out this notification from the SingPass app saying, save Singapore, uh, which leads you to a message on this app that talks about the problem of mental health stigma, the issue and how much mental health issues are growing. And to sort of uh, combat that, you have to first combat the stigma, right? So it's a very like a patriotic message about why you have to all band together to save Singapore. Uh, and then when you click on it, when you, you have the CTA to click to save, you click on it and then, then it takes you to the Club Heal platform. Uh, here, they already have a website, we just made like two different tweaks. One is yes, having a toolkit uh, that equips people for peer, uh, uh, peer support skills in, when it comes to mental health issues. The other one is the, is the basically the main feature, I would say, the ask a friend uh, feature, ask, ask for help feature. So here, we wanted to have this feature where people can uh, ask for help on the uh, platform itself because the brief called for the peer support, right? So it's not like a, a therapist or whatever, it's just somebody to listen to you, somebody to talk to. And we make made it like a reward scheme as well, where the more you ask for help or the more you answer those calls for help, you get points. Oh, okay. 
Okay. And these points can be transferred into any government payment, like for public transport, paying bills. So we were very careful as to make sure, like not using that feature doesn't take away from your life, but using it elevates you. Nice. So you give you give that incentive, right? And even with the title Save Singapore, we wanted to create that urgency, but also give some hope. Like it's not like oh Singapore is in danger. You're saying you can save it. So, but there is an urgency. You have to act now. Uh, and this effort will, of course, we wanted to support it with like Facebook, Instagram, but that was a secondary platform. And uh, also give them the opportunity to sort of uh, donate your points back to Club Heal as well, because that is another thing the brief asked for as a secondary object objective. Interesting. Well yes. done. Congratulations. How did <laughs> the judges you. react? Oh, they loved they it. They loved it. They loved it. <laughs> I heard that they were clapping when while you were leaving the room, like they, they were clapped, all applauding. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so also, one thing that they mentioned was uh, that so we use Simpass, yeah. So they specifically mentioned that none of the competitors had thought of that because they all of them had gone with the usual uh, social media touch points like Facebook, yeah. or Instagram, an app, or, an or app. whatever. Yeah. But this was something significant that we figured. We even thought about it. That interesting. We knew I that mean, this shows that real research goes a long way, right? Really understanding yeah. your consumer also goes a long way. Understanding your market goes a long way. Yeah. And we had uh, um, help from a friend in Singapore oh, who yes. validated our insights. So basically Fantastic. we're like, okay, is this true? Is this true? Is this true? And he's like, oh shit, yeah. And he was like, oh, I hadn't thought about it this way. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to it's the guys <laughs> for helping us. But so yeah. congratulations. Uh, very quickly before we wrap up, very briefly, if you could maybe give out just a few points in terms of what advice you could give future entrants. but yeah i think just be honest what you're doing don't it's my opinion. Yeah, don't overstress. Mm. Do the basics. Be sincere to what you're doing. And I think it will take you. Nice. Yeah, it, yeah. It take it's, you. It's, it's really that belief. Like, because a lot of people told us just going there is enough. And it's true, right? It is a huge deal that we just got there. But that we didn't let that sort of limit us. We were like, well, what? We can do a goal. Yeah, Sri Lanka hasn't won before in this year, so what? That, that attitude really helps. But also striking a balance of not making it your entire like life's goal so that you you will be completely destroyed if it doesn't come to you great guys so congratulations Thank once you. again i mean you have made your mentors your agencies your friends your family yes. right uh, and your country proud and you have made the industry proud right so congratulations for that so that basically is the end of our episode uh, if you did enjoy this episode, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on our future content. Right, that's it from us. Thank you very much. Just a quick uh, shout out to our sponsors once again. Uh, our episode sponsor for this episode is Prasara. Our uh, production partner is Hype Media Network. Our creative partner, Loops Integrated. And our location partner, Triad. So thank you very much. We will see you with the next episode.